pulling the PowerPoint up, I'm just going to tell you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have a little fun and we are going to each take a turn saying our favorite object in the room that we are in. So you can show the object on the screen or you can describe it and you can kind of tell the story behind it and why it's your favorite object. So I will start. I am, like I said, I'm at my 4-H office. I'm actually in our agriculture and natural resources educator's office. And my favorite object in here would have to be, she has a little baggie taped to the wall and it has a dead locust in it. And that's my favorite object because it reminds me of when I was little, I used to go around and collect like locust shells that were stuck to trees. And so it kind of just reminds me of my childhood. So that would be my favorite object. If there is someone who wants to go next. Peyton. Uh, there's a couple, but if I had to pick one that is sentimental, um, I have two lanyards from one from when I went to National 4-H Congress in Atlanta last fall and another lanyard from uh, CWF, Citizenship Washington Focus, from two summers ago. Um, all of those are national trips, so I met a lot of people from all over the country, and there's just a lot of great memories tied to those things. Yeah, fun fact, that's actually where Peyton and I met. We met yep. um, on the Citizenship Washington Focus Trip in 2018, before SJLC and all that, so we were already friends, so that was just a really cool opportunity. Yeah, I've really apply for it if you can you know i don't know how it was affected this year but when this is all over if you can apply for it is there anyone else who would like to share their favorite object in the room lucy okay um i'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this but it's a ring and it's a lord of the rings ring that my best friend got me um it was basically like a going away gift um before I moved up here um, from Delphi, Indiana. So yeah, it, my best friend got it for me and it's very special to me. That's awesome. Do you like, it, did you say it was Lord of the Rings or just a ring? I couldn't hear. Awesome. Is there anybody else? I'll go. Oh, Corley? Okay, hang on a second. My Just so you know, Rebecca. Oh, never mind. Is this clay horse that my best friend made me? It was like the first thing she'd ever given me. And it's supposed to be a Pegasus from Percy Jackson because she knew I loved that. And she's never read the books or anything to do with it, but she knew that I loved it, which made it even more special. So it's just a little clay horse that was never fired, so it's still squishy. That's awesome. Jenny, did you have something to say? I'm sorry. I was just letting you know I saw a couple like Delia and then I think Gabriel also raised her hand. So I was just letting you know who were okay. who could go next. Thank you. Gabriel, do you want to go next? Uh sure. My older brother gave me uh, this watch before I went to a Boy Scout camp to get my firecrafter. And I've held it dear ever since. That's really awesome. That's nice to have. Delia, you gonna go next? Sure. So I have this necklace from a show that I got a few years ago. And I've had a lot of great memories with it. And um, it's actually kind of worn down because like there's spots on it that's rubbed off. But I've had a lot of memories with it and it is very dear to my heart. That's awesome. It's usually, I like when some of my stuff gets worn down. It means it has it's been put to good use. Yes, it has a great um, amount of love on it. Yeah, I bet. Is there anybody else who'd like to go? Emma, 
I can. So actually, I'm not in my house right now. I'm at Kara, another counselor's house, because I have really bad Wi-Fi at home, and so I thought it would not be a good idea to be there. So um, the only thing I have here that's mine is my phone, but that's also, it's still, it's, I bet it's a really important item to all of you, but it's really important to me because, you know, it's how I contact people, and I have a lot of friends that live really far away from me, so it's how I contact them, and so it's important to me, so yeah. All right, anybody else? Okay, so next I want to know how everyone found out about SGLC and about the virtual conference. I think that'd be kind of interesting to know. Did you see it online? Did you get an email? See it on social media? You can type your answers in too if you don't really want to talk. <laughs> yeah, you can also type it in the chat. My, my mom got an email about it since Forage doesn't have my email, so she had to forward me the email, but that's how I found out about it. That's awesome. That's how that's also how I get a lot of my forage information is my mom forwards me a bunch of emails. Um, just so you guys know, um, you can let your educator know that you'd like your email in 4-H online because um, usually it's your family who inputs that information. So if you want, you can make that special request and they can add it in there. I tried to send it to members and families if I can. Awesome. So several people said that they found out from the 4-H educator. They're always a good source of information. And Gabriel said he heard about it because of his older brother. How did your older brother know? Has he been to SGLC before or did he see it somewhere? Uh, yeah, he got an email before um, as well. I can't, I think he, if I remember that he went through, I think he did it once and that's how I knew about it as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I heard also cool. about it. I heard about it through um, the civic engagement workshop last week. They announced oh, that's really cool. Peyton, were you saying something? Yeah, it was something that Gabriel said. Uh, I actually heard about SJLC through uh, my older brother. He did it two years in a row, and um, he actually did almost all the 4-H trips. So he really inspired me to go on all of them. And when I would go on 4-H trips, people would hear my last name and go like, it's like, oh, are you Chris's brother? It's like, yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> and they just, yeah. But yeah, that's how I heard about it. So yeah, it's not that's uncommon. That's really cool. Does anybody else have any older siblings where they kind of get their 4-H information from? Emma does. Yeah, I'm the oldest child in my family, and I was actually kind of a first-generation 4 her so I don't have any older siblings that I get my, Lucy's the same, she's the oldest, so we kind of have to make our own path. Okay. Hey, Peyton, do you have some yeah. more Ubuntu cards? I do, yes. Do you want to pull those up? We're going to do a few of those. Okay. So Just one more activity. And then I'm going to give you guys kind of a preview of tomorrow. We have about 13 more minutes left of our time together today. And then I'm going to give you a preview of tomorrow. And tomorrow's going to be super fun. And I'm going to tell you all about it after we play some games. Let's see. How far? 13. Yeah, we could do Ubuntu or we could tell stories, you know, it is like Vesper time. So if anyone has, you know, any, if anyone's been on a 4-H trip and has any funny stories to tell, you know, that we could do that too. Yeah, before we start the cards, does anybody have, since this was like 
this since this is kind of a virtual trip, does anybody have any funny 4-H trip memories, stories? I mean, I have like a ton of them, but I'll let someone else <laughs> so go. <do> I. <laughs> I just remember two years ago, I think the last SJLC that I was at, um, the fire alarm went off. Um, I like pretty in the evening. Does I was anybody at that one? Like I don't know. It was pretty. No, funny, but though. I have heard about that. Yeah, we have picture in our slideshow from it. If anybody wants to check it out, it's pretty funny. I have a pretty funny one about Peyton, actually. <laughs> this was when we were on our Citizenship Washington focus trip. So we stayed in rooms at the National 4-H Conference Center. And some of my friends from my county were rooming with Peyton. And they told me that one day someone kept calling into their room, kept calling the phone, and then Peyton and them said that they were just getting fed up. And so... Peyton answered it for the last time and <laughs> stated the whole Pearl Harbor speech into the phone and then just didn't say anything and just hung up. <laughs> so that is how a lot of people remember Peyton is from hearing that story. Yeah. Lucy said yeah. that last year at Roundup, she got lost at Purdue. <laughs> That's pretty easy to do. I remember my first time there, it was kind of scary. Uh, while I was working at the state fair, this was um, after hours. I've told a lot of people this story. It's a very iconic story, but after hours, um, I was an exhibit hall worker and there were like 20 of us. So in the exhibit hall after hours, we all played hide and seek. And this was during pre-fair. So there was a bunch of stuff laying out on the floor, just like in the basement and all that. And one of them were these top loading fr uh, freezers. And I had nowhere else to hide. I could hear someone coming down the stairs, keep in mind we were playing hide and seek. So it's like, I have no other option. I jump into the freezer and close it under me. And I sit in that freezer. It was unplugged. So instead of being really hot, it was really, well, really cold, it was really hot. And I sit in there for like 15 minutes, just waiting. And I hear tons of people going by me. And eventually I, I'm just like, I'm going to die in here. <laughs> so I, I resurface, I, I, I open it up like that. And uh, looking right down at the freezer was Corey. He's here right now. And he said, it's like, I knew you were in there the whole time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, that's the funniest story I have about uh, the state fair. All right, so we have about nine minutes left of today's session. So I'm just going to kind of give you a preview of tomorrow and how that's going to go. So tomorrow, if you decide to log on, and I hope that you do, we you're going to get a special welcome. So we're all just going to be on the Zoom call. And I think Jessica or Peyton, you guys will probably talk tomorrow to all of us. And then we are going to have skill sessions. So tomorrow you're going to have four skill sessions. So those will be really fun. And if you didn't know kind of what skill sessions were, so the council members taught them obviously, and they worked really hard. And so we're all really excited to share what we've been working on with you guys. And then we are also going to have some small group activities. And what I'm most excited about is the service project. So um, we're going to be making braided dog toys. So I will tell you, if you have um, like old t-shirts or an old pair of jeans that maybe you were going to donate or give to your siblings or cousins or something, this is a really great opportunity to use them. So if you have them, bring them tomorrow and maybe have them buy you. We're going to cut them up into strips and we're going to tie those into dog, dog toys. So we will teach you how to do that tomorrow. So it's a great chance to get rid of clothes. Um, so tomorrow, it will be at the same time, the same link you guys can get on with us. Um, I just want to thank you guys so much for coming today. And we ask a favor of you. So I'm going to post two links in the chat. And one of them is kind of a reaction link. It'll ask you um, some questions about how today went for you guys. It'll be really easy, really quick. And then another one is the participation link. So if you didn't complete this at the beginning of today's session, 
then we recommend that you do that now for us, please. And we are also, another thing that we kind of wanted to encourage you guys to do was in the beginning of the session, Peyton listed off all the sponsors for SJLC. And without the sponsors, SJLC really wouldn't be possible, especially this year it was virtual. It was, it's hard to have support when you're doing online stuff. So we're really thankful to our sponsors. So the, we actually have an SGLC website online and all the addresses for our sponsors are on there. So if you guys wanna write them a thank you note, you can send that as well. So I will go ahead and post these links now if you guys want to go do that. But I just wanna thank you guys so much for joining us today. So here's these links, I'll send them. If you can't find them, I have a couple. I think I have one. I sent the first one. Hopefully, it'll link for you guys. You may just have to copy and paste it into your browser to use it. Yeah, that'll probably be easier. Because I can't get it to link. I've had a little bit of trouble with technology today. <laughs> Works just fine, though, copy and pasting it. I just did it. All right, and here is the second one, if you guys didn't do that at the beginning of the session. So if anybody doesn't have anything to add or more stories, you guys, thank you so much for joining today.